Welcome back, it's nice to see you again. In today's video, I'm going to show you the easiest way to get filmic, cinematic color grades in Final Cut Pro and go beyond just the colors. So to get film grain, halation, blooming, and all in ways that are really realistic and representative of how all of these effects actually happen in the films you know and love. Before I get started, I just wanted to do a huge shout out to Dehancer Pro. They're the ones that made this video possible. And honestly, Dehancer as a product does something that goes way beyond what everybody else is doing with just LUTs to try to get those filmic colors, the contrast, the teal and orange that you're used to seeing. They actually take video, print it to film, scan the film, and then turn that into adjustments and apply it to your footage in a way that actually represents what happens on film. That's what it's called film emulation. And this is something that takes tons of expertise and equipment to do, and I'm so grateful that they're doing it because honestly, the results you can get are pretty amazing. Let's jump in, and I wanna show you what I did on my recent short film on our trip to South Dakota. If you haven't seen that video or you wanna to link to Dehancer, those are both available in the description below. But as you can see, if we jump in here, is that I've got a lot of clips all shot on DJI drones. So you can go through and apply each of these adjustments individually, but I like to use an adjustment layer. And lots of people have these available for free. I'll have a link down in the description below to the one that I'm using. Once I drop over the Dehancer Pro plugin, you might notice one thing right off the bat, and that's there's a lot of settings. But don't worry, you don't actually have to understand how all of these work. They've published the documentation if you want it, and I'll link that below. I'm gonna show you just the essentials you need to get really spectacular results, and all of the other stuff is going to be considered the extra mile getting a really unique, really specific look and understanding the technical side of film print emulation. Now, the first thing I need to do to make my footage look correct is to make sure that I'm applying it to the right camera. Now, if you're just shooting on your iPhone or maybe you don't have a camera that's represented, you can first convert it to Rec. 709 or maybe it's already shot in Rec. 709, which is just standard colors for those of you that are unfamiliar. It's what you would expect from a normal camera without anything fancy happening. Now in my case, I actually have a camera that's represented here and that's the DJI Mavic 3 shot in D-Log. So once we have that applied, we have something that actually looks pretty good right out the gate. And to get an immediate idea of what Dehancer is providing, you wanna jump down to the film section. This film section is where you can actually pick from the real film stocks that they have printed and scanned with. And my favorites are the Kodaks, but if you have a particular movie that you're trying to emulate, you like the look of, you can actually go to shotonwhat.com and they have a list of tons of movies that were shot on film and you can actually look and see what film they were shot with. Now, for me, I know that I like the Kodak and the 250D, the T, the D stands for daylight, the T stands for tungsten. All of mine are shot outdoors in daylight. So I'm gonna pick the 250D for daylight. I like the look of that one a little bit better than the 50. Now, depending on your footage, you might have something that looks really good immediately. In my case, I'm actually pretty happy with what I've got right out the gate. But if you do need to make some adjustments, I just wanna make one thing clear. This top section is where you're going to make those base corrections. So if your white balances out or things like that. A lot of the other sections, like you can see immediately below, will have similar terms like exposure adjustment. And those are actually changing the way the film is printed and then emulated. And so we don't want to just grab these and think that they're going to adjust the exposure of the original image, they're not. Now that doesn't mean we're not going to use them. So for example, I actually like the look of what happens when I play with the exposure slider right here in the film setting. As you can see, if I grab it and pull it, if I drag it all the way to the plus two, I actually get something that has a little bit more teal in the sky and I like that that still shows up. So I'm gonna leave it pulled all the way over to the right. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're gonna jump down here to film compression. Make sure you hit the enable switch. This is one thing about the Dehancer UI that drives me bonkers is that the enable switch is at the bottom of each section. But regardless, make sure you check that. Now, from here, you don't need to toy with all of the settings. The biggest one is tonal range. And you can see that some of the tones, the color tones, don't actually show up that well when printed to film. And so you can use the tonal range and the color density to try to recover some of the colors that were lost. So you can actually see, I can get back some of the oranges in the rocks and I can get back some of the teals in the skies if I just pull on these. 
Now, probably most aptly named is the impact slider, and you can see it really makes an impact when you slide it. And what it's doing is it's going all the way from what I would call a very desaturated, very high contrast look back to something that looks much closer to what I would consider just the normal look that comes out of the camera. Now I'm gonna slide it maybe very slightly higher than default because I like a lot of the colors that I'm getting out of the camera normally, but I'm not gonna crank it up all the way because I like the filmic look. That's why we're using Dehancer. Now from here, we've got something that looks pretty good. The last thing that I need is I need some contrast to come back to the image. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna come all the way back up here to the print section, and this is where I can get a lot of those final adjustments to get the colors and the tones in the place that I want. Now you can see, here's one of the examples of the things I warned you about. Exposure isn't the actual exposure of the image. This is the exposure of how they're printing it to film. So I'm gonna leave that one as is. What I want is I want more contrast in the image. Film has a faded look typically, and I want a little bit more contrast than that. And so I'm just gonna dial it up very slightly. And then the other thing is the color density. Again, this is another slider that lets me recover some of the colors that tend to get lost when they're printed to film. So with just a little bit more in the color density, I can get something that has more of those oranges and reds in the rocks that were lost. From there, you can play with other stuff. I don't really like playing with saturation because I've gotten the colors that I want in other settings. But if you want that black and white look, you can do that here. Now, here's where we go beyond just LUTs and colors and we get into some of the actual film emulation parts. So that includes things like grain and halation and the blooming of the lights. So if I come in here to film grain, I can toy with the amount and the size. Those are the ones that are gonna make the biggest difference in the look. And so I like the defaults, maybe turned down just a little bit because they're strong, but overall, it has a very classic film look to it, and I love the result you can get from this. I keep mentioning Halation and Bloom. I don't really love using them. They're a little slow to calculate, and I don't think they look amazing on every shot, but I know that that's part of the classic film look, and so if you wanna set those up, you do it here. You can also use Vignette, for example. Just remember, if you're going to play with some of these, make sure you check the box, and from there, usually you can just slide the slider and see the result. And from there, I think you end up with something that looks really good and really cinematic. And to give you guys an idea of what this looks like compared to the original footage, where we're at, and where it would look if we just converted to Rec. 709, we have the three comparisons back to back. So this is straight out of the camera. This is what it would look like if it was converted to Rec. 709. And this is with Dehancer applied, getting that really filmic cinematic look. And I think you can agree that the work that Dehancer is putting in for me here is well above what I would get just buying a filmic or a cinematic look for my camera. Overall, as a plugin, I think if you're looking for cinematic, if you're looking for filmic, or you really are into the idea of film print emulation, Dehancer covers a lot of the bases you need. And they've done a lot of work to make sure all of the technical side of it is represented. So if you want to get into it, you can really go deep. And so for that, I just want to say thank you for Dehancer to making this video possible. If you like this video and you'd like to see more, go ahead and like and subscribe. Let me know in the comments if there's something about Dehancer you'd like to see a deeper dive on. Maybe a full masterclass on all of the settings and how they actually work in the world of film print emulation. If you're into photography, you're looking for alternatives to Photoshop or Lightroom, you wanna stick around for my next videos because they've got some pretty exciting stuff coming down the pipe for you from Pixelmator and Photomator. And if you wanna see how I'm applying some of these things that I'm teaching you, go ahead and stick around for those as well. I've got another video dropping soon covering all of the sacred sites we got to visit while we were in South Dakota, as well as some other tidbits taking kids to Europe and things like that. So if you'd like to see that, stick around. I appreciate your support. It really does mean the world to me. I'll catch you later.